Hey guys, uh, Dr. Eric Linkwist here, just working on telemed. Um, and uh, I want to show you a particular presentation on why it's so important to get into the common bile duct. And uh, those of you on social media have reached out and uh, both on Facebook mobile and, and sonopatheducation.com um, want to know about how to follow the common bile duct. In, and uh, this is a good reason for it. It's a cat with a billy, billy profile. He's got a billy of 04, I think it was, an ALT of 200 and change, and Alkfoss of 400 and change, and, and an older cat, 14-year-old. And so we want to know what's going on, obviously. And so to play the Billy Rubin game, remember, uh, if the bilirubin's up and the PCV is normal, it's not prehepatic, so it has to be hepatic or posthepatic. So if you have posthepatic obstruction, you know it's going to be surgical, hopefully, unless it's uh, unless it's a metastatic disease like a biliary carcinoma or something like that that's met it already to the liver, or you're going to have a lipidosis, a hepatitis, or uh, lymphoma or something like that in the hepatic parenchyma. So FNA resolves the problem, right? So that's the bilirubin game. Um, so since this cat had a normal PCV, we know it's not prehepatic. So we're going to put the probe on it and find out, is this a hepatic issue or is it a post-hepatic issue? So this is the first view on this cat. Um, and you can see the liver has all of this, all of these tubular dilations and low bar biliary calculi going on. So this is what we call a too many tube sign, you know, uh, colloquially you see all these tubes. This is all cystic duct and common bile duct dilated and the gallbladder is over here. And we're getting up into the common bile duct area as it ends, uh, goes towards the duodenum papilla, but we have artifact in the way. So we're not seeing exactly what's going on there, but we know that this is not right. So normal common bile bile duct in cats up to about four, maybe five millimeters in an older cat. So this is an older cat. You can have five millimeters of common bile duct, but we're talking about about a centimeter dilation here, maybe a little bit more, a centimeter and a half over here. So clearly abnormal. Nobody wants a too many tube sign that's that dilated, right? So we have a gallbladder here with some debris and mineralization, but we're going to get another view. And this is why we, in the STEP protocol, we take numerous views of the liver. Uh, STEP 9 through 14 will give you every angle that you need in the common bile duct three or four times. Um, and make sure you're not going to miss any lesions up by the diaphragm. So this is a, this is an STEP 11 approach. Or you have the pylorus coming in over here in upper duodenum, and you get into that that pyloric outflow and common and the uh, portal hepatis, and then all these excessive tubes are here, which aren't supposed to be there, right? So the bottom line is we want to follow. We want to see what the gallbladder looks like. We'll see that in a second. We want to follow these tubes on down caudally until it goes up and meets the duodenum papilla, and the cat the pancreatic duct will meet with the common bile duct prior to hitting the duodenum and going into the duodenum papilla. So we want to see what's going on. So if this is all dilated, we just have to follow Yellow Brick Road on down and see what's obstructing it, right? But we want to make sure we get a good picture of the rest of the liver as well. And uh, the colleague um, uh, imaged properly, see this big, oh, about three centimeter mass here, as opposed to coalescing bile, there's a lot of echo texture here. So it's not going to be a biliary sludge ball. And of course, biliary sludge does not uh, show power Doppler signals. So good job on the sonographer, Dr. Karen Ebersol up in Maine, uh, did a very nice job with this and power Doppler. Okay. We have a mass here in the gallbladder, but this isn't causing the post-hepatic obstruction. This is kind of an incidental loma, or is it right? So biliary carcinomas, a lot of times they don't live alone. They live and they spread throughout the tubes. Now, uh, so far, hadn't seen any more of this type of pathology, but we know if that's all by itself, it needs to come out. So extra parts, right? And so we're going to follow that. We're going to look at the rest of the parenchyma here. And it's very important to look at the rest of the parenchyma because biliary carcinomas are isoechoic to the liver parenchyma. Okay, so you have to really image them well, image that parenchyma well with high resolution, make sure you're not going to miss any metastatic lesions that are throughout the liver. But you send this to surgery and it's all over the liver, it's an open and shut case and nobody likes that. Obviously, exploratory surgery is important to do, blah, 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 blah. But us as sonographers, we as sonographers, we want to be as thorough as possible and give a good overall picture with a cup half full approach to what's going on. So I'm going to call this solitary lesion 
but we're going to see some other uh, solitary lesion in the gallbladder, but not overtly causing the post-hepatic obstruction. So we're going to move on to the next image. Let's follow the too many tubes, right? You have this echojank debris in here, some sand here, more echojank debris. You have enhancement of the biliary wall here. So, uh, and obviously it's all power Doppler negative. This is a vessel here between the tubes, but the, the tubes themselves are just full of debris and bile and maybe even pus, you don't know, right? So we have to follow this down caudally towards the duodenal papilla. So we know that the problem is distal. So here is the duodenum and here is the common bile duct. Now all of that too many tube sign was over here in the left of the screen. So as we follow it down, what do we see? We see more stones, right? But we don't see any tumors, which is good, right? And if we look closely, we have more sand, more sand. And as we go into the Duanda Papilla, there's a little bit of sand entering in there as well. So this is a duodenal papilla, not the greatest image resolution here, but there's a lot of fibrosis and remodeling going on here. We have sand over in the pancreatic duct as well. Could this be a bile duct carcinoma? Of course it could, but it's not obvious. And we want to give the, the, the patient the benefit of the doubt. Now he does have that gallbladder mass, likely a bile duct carcinoma. Could this be biliary carcinoma or pancreatic carcinoma, for example? Yes, it technically could, but it would fit more with chronic inflammatory disease and remodeling inflammatory polyps. So bottom line is we give this cat the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, let's send it to surgery. We have stones and sand in the common bile duct. We have a physical chronic inflammatory obstruction and sand going on here at the DPAP causing a surgical biliary tree, right? So we have about six millimeters wide here. We have up to a centimeter wide in the common bile duct further up towards the gallbladder. And so that is a surgical bile duct, okay? Especially with the biliary of, you know, four or five or whatever it was, Alcfos ALT, everything fits. However, we have that bad boy sitting in the gallbladder, that that um, that probable gall biliary carcinoma. Now, remember what I said about metastatic disease and biliary carcinomas, especially in cats. Now, if we look at this parenchyma here, we've got a really nice view here. You see this heterogeneous, hyper to slight isoechoic change in the liver? This very well could be biliary carcinoma mets, okay? So leave it open for that potential. Maybe it's just fibrosis and remodeling. I would love for that to be the case for this cat, but we have to leave it open. You can FNA this, for example, or core biopsy it. I would probably core biopsy it if I, if I were, were to stick this lesion because it's very coarse. FNA may not exfoliate well for you. If you're going to FNA this type of lesion, you want to corkscrew it, maybe even a 20 gauge to get a good sample to exfoliate here. But this would probably be better core biopsy, or in this case, we know it's a surgical bile duct go in, take a look, inspect the liver. If it's riddled with mets, that's one thing. But if these just look like plaques or remodeling from fibrosis or whatever, the cat's been moving stones for a while. So I'm sure all of this could be chronic inflammatory and I would love for that to be the case. So I personally would send this, if this were my cat, I go to surgery with it. I'd inspect the liver, look for mets. I'd take out the gallbladder, deviate the bile duct through all of this fibrosis, reattach it to the duodenum and lavage the, bio, the biliary tree. And, um, and of, for, of course, always get a shopping spree of biopsy. So welcome to my morning, guys. I hope you enjoy this uh, follow the yellow brick road, too many tube sign case in this old biliary cat. Um, hope you're enjoying sauna minutes and we'll see you next month.